In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this 3D interface effect using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys, Drool here, back with another video. And this effect looks really crazy and complicated, but it's actually quite simple to do it. So first of all, you need to take a screenshot of your display. So open Photoshop, like I have it open right now, just open any of the projects that you have and then take a screenshot. So you should have a dedicated um, print screen button on your keyboard if you're using Windows. So go and just simply press that button and then you go to file and then you create a new document. So don't press anything else in between, okay? So press print screen, go to file and then create new. And then just create a document. And here, now you go to edit and then you should have this paste option and then you paste it. So once you have it here, we actually don't need this background layer. So double click, hit OK and you, we can just delete it. We just need this layer, right? Once that is done, let's remove this unnecessary area that we don't need. So go here, right click and select your rectangular marquee tool and make selection of the area that you want to remove. So I think this looks OK and I'm just going to press delete and it should go away. Control D. Now we also don't need this uh, actual project. Uh, we can remove that as well. So you can actually transform your selection. All you have to do is right click and select transform selection and now you can make it bigger and smaller. So make sure it's um, as pixel perfect as possible. Looks all right to me. Uh, now just hit enter to confirm your selection and then again press delete key or backspace and it should delete it. Then control D or you can go to select and deselect. Now we need to divide this into three different parts. I mean you can do whatever you want but that's what I did. So first of all I want to do this uh, tools panel uh, including the frame. So for that I'm going to go and make a selection like this. Once you are happy with your selection, make sure this tool is still selected, right? Then you right click and then you select layer via cut. Now you have that part on a separate layer and this is really important. So let's rename this to main part. Now I'm going to hide this layer because we don't need it right now. Now come back to the main, the layer one where you have it. Now I'm going to cut the layers panel using the same method. And now automatically this puts this top part into a separate layer as well. Perfect. So now let's hide all of this for now. And I'm going to just uh, turn on the main part and I'm going to put it here. And actually I also need to make canvas a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go and make it slightly taller. Now this main part, I'm going to press command T. So to put it in perspective, you have two choices. The one is like you press control T once the options like this comes up, you right click and you select perspective. And here you can go and make it small from here and big from here and it will automatically start making it look bit 3D. This is method one. Another one is a bit more manual. So you press Ctrl T again to transform it and you just hold your Ctrl key and then you drag this out like this. So I use whatever works for me at the time. I don't have any like a strict rule of what to use when. So for example, this looks okay to me and I'm fine. So I'm just gonna go and confirm it and make the overall piece actually a bit smaller. Now I'm going to do the same with layers and then to the top part. Now let's see how we can give it like an illusion that it's 3D and has real depth. Uh, I'm going to show you on the main part because it's the most complicated one. 
So once you have your main part, create a new blank layer and rename it main part depth or whatever like and this layer should be under your main part S simple right now i'm gonna go right click here and then select polygon lasso tool then you zoom in a little bit press ctrl plus or whatever to zoom then you do a click here then click here like this so basically we are drawing a depth around it so I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see what's going on. And then I'm going to put, put it here and then here. And then I'm going to close off this selection. So you just come here, double click and the selection is closed. And then here I'm going to go and select uh, any color that's brighter than this, right? So I'm going to go and select this, hit OK then just fill it so you can press alt backspace or you can also right click here and select paint bucket tool to fill it whatever this is filled then i'm gonna remove the selection and then do the same thing at the bottom so select the lasso tool so it's a little bit thinner than i need so i'm gonna do it again This one's too fat, so I'm gonna go and cut it down a bit. And just like that, you can give an illusion that it has real depth. So using same technique, I'm gonna apply it to top part and the layers panel. So the basic setup is ready now we can start adding in the background and some elements to make it look more interesting for that uh, i'm going to create new solid color uh, from here uh, and pick a really nice bright yellow color uh, so this looks good hit ok and make sure it is all the way at the bottom nice the background looks fine but the frame is still empty and we can add something to make it look more interesting for that you go to file and place embedded so i found photo of this woman sitting on sofa and thought it will be perfect to make her sit here like this so i'm gonna right click and flip horizontal and i just thought like okay maybe if she's sitting here like this it will work good uh, let's put her on the top so let's put rename it to model and she should go all the way to the top so you if you reduce the opacity you can actually check in advance right if the photo works or not this works now all you have to do is remove the background for this one i used pen tool so let me make it this a little bit smaller still confirm it make it full so i selected pen tool from here and then i removed the background like this uh, but I already have the photo cut out in the original file, so I'm not gonna waste my time. So jump cut to the model without background. One, two, three. Uh, so the background is gone. You can use any technique that works for you. And also, as you can see, I used layer mask because I like to work non-destructively. Uh, so the model is ready. And the same way, I also added a, the cat. There, you have the cat. So again, I did nothing with model and cat. I just found the photos that match the perspective. Then I just removed the background and put them here. It's always better to find the photos that already work with your perspective. So then I also thought that, hey, it looks a little bit empty on the top. So I added some clouds and birds. For that, I go to file, place embedded. So first of all, let's uh, select the birds and place them. Uh, this is super easy background right click magic wand tool do a click and just delete okay uh, uh, I forgot it's a smart object so right click and rasterize layer now I can delete so delete not even using layer mask it's so easy image uh, then I'm gonna press ctrl T and make the birds a bit smaller so they kind of look like they're coming out of the window or the frame or whatever then I added the clouds, so same way, file, place embedded, and I found this PNG of the cloud, so I, I don't even have to remove the background, man. Just place it. 
and then you can make it bigger like this so there is this watermark you can see here but all we have to do is just change the blend mode of this to screen and watermark is gone and everything is gone and you have your clouds so the clouds i want to make them a bit more perspective like the fit better everything is ready now we just need to add some shadows and do some adjustment and we're done so for the shadows first of all let's start with the model uh, for that model create a new layer and put it under your model and rename it to model shadow so you don't get confused uh, then right click and select a brush tool now in the brush right click and make sure that the hardness is zero percent you need it to be soft and then in the opacity make it like 20 30 percent and then zoom in uh, right where the model is sitting uh, and we start painting right under her butt so just start oops make sure the color here is black because shadows are usually black so start painting so the closer you are to her body the darker shadow will be simple is it scientifically accurate kind of so i'm gonna go and start painting again and then i'm gonna make the brush big and do slight shadows overall here so there's there's some presence and then i'm gonna do the same for the cat and you can also take your eraser tool uh, and then erase the shadows a little bit if they're too much okay you can always do that looks good now we can add shadows under the frame so it gives illusion that they're floating and there is a surface uh, for that you need to create a new blank layer on top of your fill layer and name it like a frame shadow uh, and this time make sure that you have your brush tool and the opacity is 100% Make your brush a little bit bigger, uh, maybe this size, yeah, and then just do a click. Then press Ctrl T and flatten it out using your Shift key like this. Or maybe not, depending on your Photoshop version. Just make it flat like this, however you do it. And then I'm going to rotate it a little bit and then stretch it out as much as I can. Confirm it and then just change the opacity to like 20-30% until it looks convincing. So hey, 40-50% 40, looks good. And then I did the same thing with the layers panel. The effect is done and you can stop here. But for me, I wanted to do some color correction to make it, you know, look even nicer. So you can do the next part only if you want to. I mean, just like the rest of the parts, but whatever. So create new blank layer on top of everything, like everything. And then press Control, Alt, Shift, and E. So this should basically create a JPEG inside your document, right? Then right click and select Convert to Smart Object. Then you go to Filter and select uh, um, camera or filter and in the camera or filter I'm gonna reduce the exposure I'm doing it because now it will allow me to increase the highlights and shadows without blowing things out so I'm gonna go and increase the highlights a little bit then I'm gonna increase the shadows a uh, little bit of whites and then a little bit of blacks basically i'm pushing all of these things further and then i'm also gonna add a little bit of contrast a little bit of texture and then a little bit of vibrance and i can do all of this because i reduced my exposure see what happens if i keep the exposure zero zero it looks really washed out but the moment i push it like minus 0.40 minus 0.50 it suddenly looks really good and I can make the uh, shadows even pop a bit more. Okay, that looks nice. And then hit okay. 
so before after before after see it looks like it has a bit more life and that's it uh, this is how i created this uh, interface effect and you don't have to do it exactly the way i did just use the same concept and do whatever you want be creative most importantly have fun so yeah that's it and i really hope that you guys learned something from this video if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions feel free to ask me in comment section below and make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification icon if you want update for every time i upload a new video so till then i'm druval telling you goodbye take care and have some fun with photoshop